No, we're not robophobes, but today we're going to talk about why we prefer welders over robots. Companies that are betting on automation exclusively, that's a false choice. There are absolutely operations that are best suited for robots, but an employee that is skilled in their craft and takes ownership in their work is far superior to a robot every single time. We're here in this cell, and this was actually built by Hawk Technology. This cell is kind of near and dear to my heart because this is actually where I got my start in manufacturing. I spent about six months uh, working and programming these robots to get this project up and running. Recently, we checked the counter on it, and this cell in the last 10 years has produced over 800,000 parts. So in this cell, you have to have the welding robot, and then the material handling robot is vastly more expensive than the welding robot. So the material handling robot actually has to grab the part and present it to the robotic welder and then rotate so that you get the perfect angle for all your welds. If it was a person doing it, you would say, just weld it the way it is, you know, go upside down, get on your knees, whatever. But no, with robotics, you make it perfect for the robot. So a huge concept dad had from the beginning, say, hey, if you're gonna invest all that in a robot, why not invest that in your welder? Improve the fixturing, and give a balance positioner so he can spin it to position it the way that works best for him. That's how you handle it in robotics. We've also tried to apply that to our manual welders. And another thing that you should consider before going robotic is that if you invest in a robotic cell, you know, say a million dollar cell, your money is totally tied up with that thing and it has to work. And take this for example. So this is one actually where we bet it all on automation and it totally let us down. This is a million dollar cell, we made a huge investment and at the end of the day, this cell has only produced about $60,000 worth of good parts. Where our welders and our fabricators have done so much more in that period of time. For the industries that we serve, the wastewater, forklift industry, data centers, a skilled fabricator with a handheld laser welder is a much better fit for our work. And another thing, for the companies that are chasing after automation to get rid of people, you still have to have someone to fix the robots when they go down. You still have to have someone to program them. You still have all the support roles in between. It does not fix your people problems. Another huge thing with this cell, if this cell went down for any reason, all of the work stopped and I had five or six people just staring at me, waiting for me to finish fixing the robot. Once we switched over to team productivity, if this robot goes down for any reason, they don't stop. They pull the parts off, they start welding them by hand. So the production never stops. So that's an example where we're running this as a robotic application, but we don't have to. We're doing it because it's more effective and when it's running, it's great. And when it's not, we are hand welding these. If you can have it where you have experienced welders working alongside industrial robots, that is a great solution. And we all know Elon Musk and he pushes for automation and AI and even he said humans are underrated. And this is after pushing to have huge levels of uh, industrial robots in his factories. Now look, we're not anti-robot. We use them where it makes sense. Here's a really good example. So these are stub shafts robotically welded. I mean, they look perfectly clean and we do hundreds of these. Circles, robots absolutely crush circles. They can weld circles all day long and the quality comes out fantastic. With this cell, it was north of $150,000. When we purchased it, we had a really good project for it, very repeatable work. So once we started developing the fixturing and we started doing the programming, we really struggled to compensate for the distortion. No matter what batch to batch, your parts are gonna have a little bit small variants. The steel thickness is gonna change, the bend is gonna change by a fraction of a degree, and robotics have a really hard time compensating for that. One day the welds would be great, on the next batch they'd be slipping off the part or burning through and just massive amounts of scrap, and we were not able to get it up and running for about two years, actually. It just got up and running about two weeks ago, but the whole time that we've been working on this cell, if we'd been relying on this cell, we would've shut down our customer, we would've stopped the line, we wouldn't have produced anything. In those two years where this robot was not running, our welders were welding the parts, burning them up every single day and hitting the quality targets, hitting the delivery targets. So this is one where you can't bet everything on automation. You can't bet everything on a robot. The robot will fail, there will be problems. So if you're a business owner and you're looking to go robotic, I would make sure you think about it because it's not just the robot. You have to have the programmer, the maintenance guy, and maybe in your company, you'll be the one to do it. You can do the programming, you do the maintenance. I highly suggest it, get your hands on it, make sure you're comfortable with that cell. But if you're not, and you're not prepared, that robot's just gonna be a paperweight. There is a pressure to automate. We do have to be very conscious and careful that we don't fall behind in our processes. 
If we become slow and inefficient, we'll lose the work. You can't not progress with technology, but for us, the biggest solution that we have found is setting up a system where we can unlock the creativity of everyone who works here. So now if you think about it, instead of just me thinking about different ways to improve, there's 185 people thinking about all the little different ways that they can improve their work, improve the product, improve the speed. That's invaluable. I'll give you a really easy example in machining. A lot of machine shops, you have one operator and he manages one machine and he sits there. When he hits the button, then you have to wait till the cycle to finish, right? So when you're doing that and you pay someone to sit there for 10 hours a day in front of one machine, yeah, a robot would make really great sense if you're doing repetitive work. If you watch our shop, there'll be one guy and he'll be bouncing around between machines, balancing the cycle time. If this one takes 20 minutes to cycle, he'll hit start, he'll go over, he'll set the next one up. He'll hit start on that one and maybe by the time he finishes the third machine, the first one will be finishing up that part. They're being effective with their time, they're being effective with the way they're setting it up. If the team is able to find a way to more effectively or more efficiently do something, and it increases the output, they see the exact same percentage increase on their check. And they're coming up with all these little micro solutions that increase the productivity of the company. Chasing after a fully robotic factory, that's a false choice. And it's based on the assumption that you can't find good people. That's absolutely not true. The way we've done it is we've looked at our system and we've changed our system. We run off of a team productivity model. So a lot of the problems that automation is looking to fix, the problem a lot of times is caused by the way you set the system up. A huge danger also is that if you think you're going to save tremendous amounts of money by going to automation, you may save some, but you're gonna end up paying for it in other ways and other places. It's always gonna cost more than you expect. Breakdowns are gonna be more costly than you anticipated. And sometimes at the end of the day, a welder could have done it much better. So I'd highly suggest you get creative with your systems, invest in your teams, and maybe at the end of the day, all you need is a really good welder. You don't need a million dollar robot. If you have any content you'd like us to make or you have any questions, feel free to reach out. And again, let's make America manufacture again.